<laughs> we do have in the studio today on Celeb Stopover someone that is, I think he's a father of our immediate history. Sort of, yeah. You know, is um, he's an OG of some sort. Yeah, so if you are a twenty-something kid, <laughs> you know he is your dad. <laughs> if you like, now where to start from? This guy is a multiple award-winning, should I say, filmmaker or music video director? If you like, he's branched into documentary filmmaking. He's done a number of gigs that you've seen, but you were wondering, like, who did that? Okay, sounds nice, not too bad. If you watch Africa as a curator, at any point in time. And you have ever, at any point in time, you said, oh, I did not know that that was the mean of this fantastic, mm. beautiful proverb. It is courtesy this guy. And I noticed, or rather, I realized just two days ago or so, that he actually voiced too. <gasps> I did not know. <laughs> I, you know how you see filmmakers and you just do not think that they have anything to do with their voice? Like you just say, ah, this person, it's just, it's just a filmmaker. Like it's just okay to see Akian Labi. Okay, I said his name already. <laughs> Akian Labi, what's up? How you doing? I'm good. I'm fine. It's so good, so good to have you here. My pleasure. And I love your skin color. Oh, and you love my voice too. Yeah. <laughs> you, have a, you have a great complexion. You, you have that kind of complexion that reminds me of some things I was taught in junior secondary school. Mm. You know how you're in school and they bring some dermatologists Mm -hmm. to talk to you children or students about skin and they tell you oh these are the kinds of cream you should not use mm -hmm. as long as you check it and it has a uh, mercury it has ah, i've forgotten the remaining <laughs> can you imagine what happened just now but anyway your skin is just on point Thank you very and much. I, I like the way you carry yourself around you are you are so artsy how do you divide yourself into so many parts how do I divide myself? I don't, I don't think I'm divided. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, I think I'm a oh, I don't think I'm divided. Um, so it's like, it's easy for me to just, you know, move around all the different, all the different parts you, mm -hmm. you think is different. So for me, um, it's easy for me to move around. Um, I don't find it very difficult. So let me guess. When there is no music video to mm -hmm. shoot, yeah. you just wake up one morning and say, you know what? This guy is too black. Let's make it colorful. <laughs> and then you start to paint. <laughs> and when you're done, you show us on social media. Yeah. yeah well, it's, it's, even, it's not even when I'm not having a music video to do. So that doesn't determine what, what I do. Okay. It's just basically whatever comes to my mind at any particular time. Um, I, just, I just do it. Um, sometimes I have some ideas that I have the idea in mind now. But when I execute, it could be two months time. Wow. But already the mind, the idea has been in my mind for like two, maybe two months. Or sometimes I've even executed, I don't post. Oh. Yeah. So maybe when I'm now very busy, I don't have time to post any new stuff. I just go back to this kind of stuff and, you know, I'm post them. And I, as we said before, I, I, um, like two years ago, I used to be very, very, I was so much into the arts kind of stuff. But since last year, I've not been doing it that much. I've been doing more more of um, what I call motion arts, you know, where <laughs> and lots of people follow me on Instagram just be, just because of that. You know, where you come to my page and you see things that are not possible, <laughs> <laughs> crazy things that you know normally won't won't be visible. I just make them happen. Like somebody just, falling from as high as a skyscraper. Yeah, or floating, mm. or mm. just I just you know I always like to like tease my brain and push the limits and see okay. What if we do this like this? Or what if this happens? Or can't we, can't we? I'm always thinking like that. So I try to make it happen every time. And people are always like very impressed by by, by it. Okay, so um, let me take you back to, I want to, you know, go with works that people are quite familiar with. Mm. So uh, Komole came out like 2012. Yeah, 2011, 2012. 2012. 2012. Mm. Yeah, so you shot the video and then yeah. there was a remix with Vector yeah. and um, Proverbs. Yeah. yeah? So... Since then, what has happened? What happened to TIV? You were in a group with your wife? Yeah. TIV, see, we see release, see release, released the video last year. Last year, I think April. Um, song is titled Wawa wow, Right. You know that video was futuristic, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm always futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's my problem. Um, I'm too futuristic. Why that, is it a problem? It's a problem because sometimes you do things that people that are in the present might not connect with. Okay. You know, and you say that it's too early. And I've noticed it a lot in some of the things I've done that sometimes I do things too early. Oh. Yeah. 
for example, um, many years back, I had an idea for um, outdoor advertising using plasma screens then. Then we had plasma screens. So I had this idea that, okay, you could put, put plasma screens in public places like fast food joints, airports, places like that. And you could, you know, put adverts there and also put proverbs and quotes there. Okay. You know, so the proverbs idea, I've added, I'm talking about 2000 and this is probably like 2004. Oh, wow. Yeah, before the um, banks banks merged together. When you say you had like UTB bank and quotes, that, yeah. was, so that was our era. So I had an idea then and I, 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 got, I got a patent for it. And they started marketing it. And then people were saying, ah, I, I, we're gonna, we went to some banks, you know, told them about the idea. Oh, they said we lo- loved it and very fantastic idea. But unfortunately, the cost was so high. As at that time. So that time, the plasma screen was going for almost a million naira, just one. And to do that kind of project, you need, for example, you want to do that kind of, um, have it in all your branches, maybe in a bank now, for example, have it in, maybe in all your branches. That's very capital intensive. So, at the end of the day, it didn't fly. So I killed, I just killed the dream and faced my, faced the music, <laughs> music, music video, whatever, and, and just forgot about that idea. And then I also went to meet a particular company and they told me that, oh no, we don't want to bother our customers with mm-hmm. adverts and stuff like that. You know, I don't want to mention the name of the brand, but okay. it's a big, a big restaurant, very big restaurant. Okay. <laughs> fast forward to maybe 10 years after mm-hmm. and I go to one of their fast food and I see that same thing, that same idea. I see a screen, a flash, <laughs> now it's a flash screen. It's LED screen yeah. or LCD screen. Yeah. And I see that same screen, that fast food with adverts running in it. Almost all of them have it <laughs> right now. And it's like, I brought mine out maybe 2004, mm-hmm. 2005. Mm. So I just said, oh, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to bother about, you know, doing having court cases and say, oh, I have the patent right mm-hmm, to this idea. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So I just let it just, um, okay, it's one of those things. That, you know, but that made me know that, okay, the idea I had then was valid. Was a good idea. It was a very good idea, but it came early. Oh. The technology was not there yet. Was not affordable was enough not affordable at then, that time. So, yeah, at that, that time. So. Oh, okay. Interesting. So that's why I agree I'm futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now let's, you mm. said uh, TIV came out with a video last year. Yeah, last year. Wow, wow, right. Wow, wow, right. Yeah. Okay. Now let's uh, come to now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very curious. What exactly puts food on the table in all of the things that you do? Put food on the table. I know you're a multi-talented creative. Yeah. So what exactly is it that gives you, that you can drop every other thing for? Like Mm. whenever that thing comes up, you're like, you know what, guys, take a pause. (laughs) This is... Of course, it's video making. Okay. Video making. Music video. Music video one. Then I also do... uh, I do movies and I do commercials. Okay. So music video one, um, commercials two, um, then um, filmmaking, movies three. Okay. But I think it's... It's, it's changing now. I'm also I'm now having more calls to do movies. Oh, so well, what's the latest one you worked in? Um, it's called um, Jumai. I'm Jumai. Yeah, we're like shot the in, we're shot in, Yeah, everybody is raving about it. I'm, I'm raving about it right now. Like, <laughs> picture is it's good. I've never seen the trailer. Yeah, no, like, it, was just, a, no it was just picture. it was just a picture you posted, yeah. and I was like, whoa! Even the before was fantastic. Yeah. Before the color grading yeah, was yeah. fantastic. It was good. Okay. I'm, no, I'm, so that was shot in Abuja and, and there's a film about um, terrorism in the north. Oh. Yeah. So it's... From a particular family's point of view, yeah? Yeah. From a particular family's point of view. Oh. From a child. Oh. A child that was kidnapped. Oh. You know, so it's very, very nice story. Okay. Yeah. At least when we watch that movie, mm. whether the story is fantastic or not, <laughs> we're going to know that the filmmaker was showing off. <laughs> yeah. Was I showing off? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'm very curious about how you've been able to stay relevant this long. It's not everybody that, you know, is consistently in our faces, mm-hmm. whether behind the scene or not. How yeah. have you been able to stay consistent in the entertainment industry? Well, I think um, my philosophy usually is to, I, I like to think like an upcoming artist or upcoming director or upcoming filmmaker. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't think like someone that's arrived or that's made it yet. So I'm always seeing myself as, okay, I'm still, I've not achieved anything yet. So that's where I think, that's where I reason. And that, that drives me. Okay. And I always believe there's more, there's more, there's more. I don't believe... Oh, I've done everything that needs to be done. I always be there is, there is more. 
something can this thing can still be better. So I'm always pushing myself. So I also believe that I don't need to wait for someone to give me a job before I work. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if I don't have a job, I think create I create a project myself. I create jobs myself. I don't need to, it's not I don't have to wait for someone to give me a job before I will think. So I I'm always I'm, I'm always putting on my thinking cap, you know, to create and do something whether it's um, a commission project or whether it's mine. I'm always, you know, I'm always thinking. So I think that's, a, that's, that's helped a lot. So do you do music production? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's one part that a lot of people don't know about me. <laughs> I, I sort of heard. I like I to, about... yeah, I like to keep it secret a lot. You Why? Know? Because people feel it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, so, I mean. Well, you just feel it's too much. I was okay, let me just leave that one and so but mostly I just I produce for I produce for fun I produce just to let out the, the idea, creative side the of idea the creative side of me you know but the funny thing is that when I produce most times and artists hear you they say man who did this thing this thing is good now give me give me give me give me and it's always very surprising to me because I don't I'm not a like that's not where your focus is right now I don't listen to music like that oh okay I don't listen to music like that except the ones I want to shoot but you see me having lots of music in my phone, listening to music. I don't listen to music. So it's always very surprising to me to do stuff that, that is like relevant now. I can produce music that people will listen to now. And most of TIV's job, I produce them. You know, so that's, that's like just the only way I um, express myself musically. Okay. All right. Uh, there's something I noticed in the wake of uh, COVID-19 mm-hmm. in different parts of the world. Um, I went to the bank very recently and they asked, oh, um, sorry, you would have to use the hand sanitizer. And I'm like, no problem. But my worry was that when all of this is over, are we still going to be that, you know, sensitive? sensitive? Um, are we going to be that careful? Are we still going to be talking about hand washing? What do you think? Because the period that we're dealing with mm-hmm. Ebola, I remember how careful yeah, everybody was. was then we went know. back to our default setting. But now, our default setting is we don't send. That's the default setting. <laughs> For real, we don't okay. send. When there's emergency, you will change. <laughs> when the emergency is over, when the storm is over, we go back to default setting, Hi. which is anything goes. Oh, goodness. So we don't really, we've not really adapted the culture of, um, you know, safety, hygiene, safety. hygiene, safety, and stuff like that. We've not, we've not um, imbibed it. And it's supposed to start from maybe primary school. Mm. You mm. Know, so if the kids start imbibing it and it's part of the culture then maybe 10 years time from now it's going to become the culture in the mainstream okay Let, let's talk about the culture of um, buying merchandise in okay. Nigeria because I know that you actually um, do put your signature on sneakers yeah. I don't know like if people were to buy cars that you put your signature on I'm yeah, not sure definitely. how much yeah. <laughs> it will be or do I just buy my car and bring it to you yeah too? you can buy your car and bring it yeah or you could just start having a production line it's not impossible no, 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 like, no, no, you no, could no. do a partnership with a car company this, this, well it's, it's, I don't think it's a commercial idea like that okay it's so not now something... you think it's futuristic <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not some maybe it's futuristic but I don't think it's something um, you could do in volumes mm. it's something that maybe one person in a month or in six months will want to do so it's not it's not something that appeals to a lot of people do you have a business manager? not really I did business management in school <laughs> <laughs> I know you cannot add that yes I was gonna ask you so how did you go when did you realize that you were a bunch of creativity that you had so much in you okay when I was in university you didn't know before you went to university or it was just before I went to university yeah um I used to draw okay my parents knew I could draw so they forced me to do fine arts in secondary school which I didn't have interest in doing you could draw, but you didn't like fine arts. I didn't like fine arts. I was doing That's commercial. odd one. So they f- made me do fine arts. So I did fine arts. Then in university, they made me do... Okay, before before going to the university, mm-hmm. um, I was sent to a computer school. So I was very fortunate to be like part of the first set of people to go to computer schools back mm-hmm. then. Computer centers. It was like 1990. 93 or 94 so they're about I won't so, tell you where it was <laughs> so I went to computer school and then yeah. desktop publishing okay. so then, then I, that was where I discovered computers so I took my arts um, idea and made it digital 
So I started doing graphic design. So I started graphic design from like 94. I started doing graphic design. So before I entered university, I was already doing graphic design using Corel Draw. So entering into university, I like become a growing graphic design then. I went to University of Illinois and I was like the hottest graphics guy in Illinois. I was getting lots of jobs. And that was what um, one of the things that made me know that, oh, and I was getting paid. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was getting paid. So when I was in school, I remember there was a time I was broke and I sent a message on that I'm broke, or send money. And they said, ah, Shabia, you didn't be that mean. <laughs> Practice what you are studying. <laughs> so I took that word. And then I used to do, um, what are they called? Key orders. Oh, okay. So I'll buy cardboards, buy markers, tempo markers, fluorescent markers. You also write stuff on the key order. I'm a winner, I'm this, I'm that. Um, and painted. Laminate them, punch them, put the rings, sell, and people bought. Oh, wow. And you were like, whoa. So, so, uh, <laughs> so I can think of an mm-hmm. idea and mm-hmm. I'll put it out and mm-hmm. people will buy so that gave me boldness. I know that means I can make money myself. Now mm. I can think and make money. So that's giving that boldness and confidence. And little by little, I started relying less on making or getting the certificates. Or mm. no, not getting the certificate, or making like a two one, a one one. And then going to say, in my, in my first job. year, I was like two one level. Second year, the, the, zeal. the zeal dropped. I was now making, I was making money out. So it just, but my, my colleagues didn't even know I was a student. They didn't know I was a student. They just thought I used to visit campus. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, student. You know, so, you know, so my job, my, my interest changed. I, my focus changed from trying to make good grades to developing my talent. Mm. And that was what, you know, helped me to, so all, two secondary school, sorry, secondary school, two university days. I think that, that, I, the, the, the foundation for who I am today was laid. Oh, okay. From graphics to music. I did my first music album in university. Oh, wow. Yeah, 1999. That was my final year. So I released my first album. That was the first time I went to a music studio. So 1999, that was when I did all that. So that was before I now graduated. So by the time I graduated, I was ready to... If I was like daring to go into the real world and, and explode... Wow. Okay. That's an interesting one. I could chat with you all day. You could. <laughs> yeah. Your in one. Okay, what is the current okay. project you're working on? Um, last year, I did a project on um, Morimi, okay. like an animation story on Morimi called Morimi the Legend. And the response was very, very, was very good. So this year, I am currently working on an animation story on another female, leg- female Yoruba legend. Um, who is actually the first female Alafi for you. Ooh, you never heard about that. I heard about it, but I can't remember the name. Yeah. So. Tell me now. <laughs> you want me to tell you? No, I won't tell you. Wait Please. till then. Wait till then. I'm not going to wait till. You have to wait till then. Check search online for the first female Alafi. <laughs> wait till you. then. No, no, no. I'm not going to wait for this. <laughs> this is this is conspiracy so okay. I'm, I'm working on an animation movie on that okay fantastic mm. that's interesting i've seen something like that before and i think where i saw it it was a sponsored ad for, for a sponsored ad from a news media mm. on facebook they were trying okay. to talk about you know the person yes the particular person so i read about but not, but I okay, the story the, yeah the story yeah. around that person mm. and the problems very, that the very chiefs, interesting that the chiefs yeah. actually gave the, this that particular first, female a lot first, um I don't want to say transgender. Or so. Yeah, that was yeah. the angle of the story. So they were yeah. saying maybe, you know, maybe plastic surgery is older than what we know. Yeah. And they were just, you know, giving it a, a yeah. more... Yeah, so it's, it's a very interesting story. I totally get you. Yeah, that would be interesting to yeah, watch. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to wait almost a year to get that story. Oh. I was just lucky. Oh, okay. Fantastic. So where are we going to watch it? Online. Is it going to be of a full length? I don't know yet. Okay. Currently, we're working on a teaser. Or series. Which one? Uh, can be a series. Hmm. Can be a series. Where will the money come from? I don't know where that money will come from. You never know. It can be, can never... be. I don't think it will be a series. It okay. Be, so, but for now, we're working on the teaser. Okay. So the teaser should be out by next month. Okay. So, from whatever reaction we get out of the teaser, that would determine that we we'll do a short film or we we'll do a full length film. Oh, okay. Well, I wish I could do a full length film. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking of something for a while. Mm. I think it's something you might be quite interested in. Mm. There's this. Uh, book that children use, like maybe children that are less than one. 
okay. a few months old. They, they ha- there's this A, B, C, A for Apple and mm. all of that. You know, I just keep picturing it in Yoruba. Like the Yoruba version that has Office. the A, B, D mm. stuff. And then, you know, it also has a sound to it. So when a child oh, opens okay. it, there's a sound. So it's mm. teaching the child literally. It's not, it's not waiting for somebody to say, oh, okay, you see, this yeah. is A. Uh, I, I think it's something we should really consider. And I'm, I wonder why we were not there yet. Well, I don't think... I'm not a language specialist. I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was working on something close to that. Mm. You know, but um, the progress is very slow. I was working on like names of um, popular items in Yoruba language. Okay. For example, what do you call microphone in Yoruba language? I have no idea. And imagine. Okay, what do you call wristwatch in Yoruba language? Ago. It can't just be ago. Because there's wrists there. There's maybe. wrists there. Yeah, maybe uh, ago agbeka. Uh, <laughs> oh, ago agbeka. So. <laughs> but that's another, like an adjective. Yeah, there. to yeah, describe yeah, what kind of wrist, what like kind of clock it walk, is. Yeah, oh, you know, okay. So, so I was doing something that will, you know, that will mention the names of stuff like that in Yoruba language. Mm. Okay, name of this in Yoruba is this. Name mm. of this. No, but it's, the progress is slow, so it's not. I know there's a lot of campaign around the fact that Akara is not being cake; it is Akara. <laughs> <laughs> we did not change the name of pizza <laughs> or uh, shawarma, <shower-over>. well. <laughs> so just take it like that. Anyway, thank you very much. It was nice chatting with You're you. Welcome. Yes. Yeah, so we'll sign out with a song. You shot the video for the song. Yeah. That's Lamba Extra by Slimcase. Slim yeah. yeah. So is the video out? Uh, since um, December. December last yeah. year. So I'm going to watch it today after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. You're for- Welcome. Coming on the show. So, is there any advice you have for young people that would like to, especially going to music video production? Well, young people that want to go into, don't go into music video production, go into filmmaking. Go into video production, not music video production, because you might not know which will pay out for you at the end of the day. Hmm. I have a, um, I have someone that learned from me. That ordinarily should have, you know, if if you if wanted to follow my path, like going into music video production. But today is the number one video director for comedy skits. Almost all the popular comedy skits is the one shooting them. Wow! And so he has found his place, comedy skits. Niches, niches there. So yeah, so that's so learn video making, then find your own space. Wow! Thank you very much, Akia Lavi. It's been great, great chatting with you. And uh, we hope to have you on the show again sometime very soon. Yeah, you might, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. It's been a wonderful time on Celeb Stopover today and right here on your favorite station. My name is Ife Ajagwe. I've been working with the amazing at I Am Unbeaten is the producer for this show. <laughs> you can actually hit him up so that he can produce a song for you or whatever it is you want to do. Just hit at I Am Unbeaten up. Also, big shout out to Dale Grainix and that's D-A-L-E G-R-W-E-N-I-X for helping with packaging this video. You can check out the video for this conversation on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. The advantage is that you can be the first to know when the video drops. That's the fantastic part of it. And of course, big shout out to the researcher and publicist and that's talking about Digiplug. Check him out on social media. And big shout out to you for staying tuned and listening to Celeb Stopover all the time. See you next time. Bye-bye.